Hey guys, my name is Ismaus and welcome to Top Channel 101 and today we're going to be making this medieval bridge and uh, we want to make it procedural using geometry nodes and blender and the project files are in the description. As you can see, we can adjust its width, uh, the number of arches in it and uh, its height. You can even add a chain, uh, make it more tight or sag a bit. Uh, but uh, yeah, so if you are interested in something like this, if you want to learn how to make something like this, Buckle up and uh, let's get started. I'm excited uh, to show you how to do this. I'm hoping that you are excited as well. Uh, get the project files in the description if you want to follow along or examine how I set up everything. So yeah, let's jump right in. Okay, this is going to be based of uh, a curve object and uh, so we can easily edit it I like that. So let's start a new project. Uh, make sure you have some reference images and I'll recommend you use something like PureRef. And I'm going to be sharing this uh, this PureRef bunch of images here on my uh, Blender Everything website. Uh, so if you want, make sure to check the links in the description. i uh, set up a new project, go to Geometry Nodes. Uh, let's start with uh, a curve object. This is going to allow us to draw the, the bridge. Most of the times, the bridge, you're going to, the bridge you're going to create is just going to be a straight bridge. You rarely see any bridge that is curved like this, but uh, we'll still have that option if we do it using a curve object. Uh, just to make sure that you have that option as well, just use a curve object. And uh, so we have this, uh, let's set up a new uh, geometry nodes modifier. I'll just click new to add that. And uh, we're going to start by uh, making sure that this is a platform that people can work on and then we can build on top of that. Uh, let me expand my space here and uh, just use another curve, curve line. Uh, this is going to be the profile of our curve and I'm going to use uh, that in combination with the curve to mesh node uh, like this and I use this line. Uh, if we preview this line, it's just a, a line like that. And if I plug it into the profile and preview this now, I should be able to see uh, the curve, but I think I need to adjust the settings here. Let, let me, I want to use the X direction. I want uh, to start with negative values. So I'll start with a negative 0.5 and then end with a 0.5. So that, uh, and I'll, I'll reduce the Z like I want. And the reason I'm using negative 0.5 and a 0.5 is so that I can keep uh, the width of my path uh, to a length of one. This will, it will make it easy for me to work with other things like uh, the car ramp. Uh, yeah, we want to extrude this platform up uh, so that we can use a Boolean object to, to cut these holes in. Uh, so for that, let's uh, use an extrude mesh, extrude mesh uh, like this. And uh, right now we are extruding individual faces. Let's extrude everything. And uh, uh, let me turn on wireframe here so that uh, I can see how everything looks. Yeah, we are good. Uh, if we're using booleans, uh, we are going to have a problem with this hole here, so we need it to be filled as well. So I'm going to just grab the original mesh we have here uh, using the transform. Actually, I can just use the join uh, geometry, join uh, this part with this, so these two here. And so we have an enclosed thing uh, like this. We can still adjust it as a curve object, uh, which is great and uh, these are separate meshes and i can prove that by using the scale elements you can see that these are two different meshes we want to keep them as one uh because again if we have this hole uh, in there uh, it's going to affect how our boolean works so i'm just going to use a merge by distance here uh, so that when we use the scale element it's just as we can see that uh, it's a single object i'm going to frame this Control j I uh, will call this, uh, so this is our block and uh, we can play with the extrusion here and uh, this is going to control the height of our bridge and I can expose that. I can choose to, to expose it right now but uh, let me just use an input value, uh, a value here, a float value and I'm putting it out of the frame so that I can know that this is an input that I will later expose and I maybe can even change the color of this like that. Okay. Now we want to have a Boolean object that we are going to cut through here. So let's do that. I'm going to use uh, an arc like this. Let me go to the top view for a minute. Uh, we, want to, we want this to be 180 degrees. So it's an arc. And uh, uh, let me rotate it so that it's standing using the transform. 
and I want to rotate this on the, let's see, let's see, what is that, on the Y axis by 90 degrees. So if we go to the front view, we can see it like that. But I want it to be elongated down. Okay, so this is what we have. Uh, we can use a fill curve uh, to fill this in, but uh, if you put it uh, after the transform, it's going to flatten the curve. You need it to have, you need it to be before the transform so that we have uh, something like that. You can use an end gone or triangles. I, it doesn't really matter right now. Uh, so since we have that, we can extrude this base here. So that we can push it up or we can uh, we want to be able to control the height of this so i'm going to use a set position a set position and what i want is to select the vertices from here all the vertices below this line here above this line here all this and push them up be able to control their height and i can use that i can uh, just grab a position node and use a separate a separate xyz because i want to compare their height the height of these points all the vertices up here if they're greater than zero on the z axis i can push them up so i'm going to grab here and use a math node or a compare node just use this if it's greater than if a is greater than zero uh, it will just give me a selection and then i so i can just pull push that up i can control uh, the height of this like this and I can also use a combine XY because I want to be able to just adjust uh, that height separately now we might want some more resolution here so we have control over the radius but I'm, I'm sure we can control that somewhere else uh, let's see uh, I want uh, another input for this and uh, you can see that uh, these inputs are identical so I can use uh, the same input uh, for this but uh, let's wait before we get there uh, let's first make this an actual object so we have this uh, we, we need to extrude it so I'm going to use an extrude uh, mesh extrude it like that so that uh, is and I want it to be extruded by 0.5 so that uh, because you see uh, the width of our actually I think I need to join let me join this together for now just so we can see how they look compared to what we have so this is what we have the reason i'm using 0.5 uh that because it's the same length we have here so 0.5 so this starts from 0.5 so if we mirror this as well or if we extrude this if we have another extrusion of this let me create another join geometry here but this time we extrude uh, the mesh in the negative negative 0.5 uh we have now something like that and uh since these are two values, we can turn them into a single value. I can use a value input, connect one here and another one here. Uh, because this one is a negative value, uh, so we want to use 0.5. Uh, because this one is a negative value, we can multiply it by negative one, uh, multiply uh, by negative one, so that it becomes negative 0.5 and uh, we are back to where we were. And uh, we want this, because we're using booleans again, we want this to be a slightly larger than the actual bridge width, uh, which we will set up a bit later. I think we can add it here. Uh, we can add a transform, a transform node here, so that we have, so that we are able to change uh, the scale of the bridge. So if I scale this on the x-axis, I'm able to do that there. So I'm going to grab another input and I need another combine XY and a combine XY uh, this should be one one and uh, uh, this is going to be an input for the X and come here and just add a math node uh, because I want to use one control to control the width of the boolean and the width of the bridge so I'm going to add a math node, another math node here. Math, a math node here with the option multiply. Multiply and just use this value here. So yeah, now we can control the Boolean and this using one, one unit or one value. And because we have a 0.52, uh, this boolean will always be a little bit wider uh, than the, the bridge because we need that 
to be the case uh, for this to work correctly. Uh, another thing I want to do is, uh, if you look at the bridge, uh, this arch is inside, is under the bridge, not above it. Uh, so we might want to transform or scale this down a bit. We might need to scale this down a bit using, let's say, a transform and scale this. Uh, that's going to create an issue. Uh, because now this is, uh, let's, let's do 0.5, I like that. So let me see, okay, 0.5, this is still above. Maybe bring it down to something like that. And now I can come in here, just increase this like that. Yeah, now we still have one unit uh, that can help us adjust everything uh, like that. And uh, we have this intersecting issue. It's also going to create a problem when we are using Booleans. So I'm going to offset uh, this down a bit, push that down a bit. Now uh, let's come back here to this value. See if we adjust it, uh, there's no problem. Uh, when, when we adjust the height, uh, we want to be able to adjust the height of the bridge. So let's see, let's see where is that. Uh, the height of the bridge is set by this value. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can see they're all using 0.5, so we can just use a single value. And uh, uh, because of this, this kind of setup we have, uh, the bridge will always be a bit above our, unless if we push it too hard, and then that that creates an issue. So we have this this mesh and this, so we need to, to use this mesh to cut through this other mesh. So I can use a Boolean mesh, Boolean, a mesh Boolean node. I need this to be, I don't need this anymore. Look at this, I have that. I can connect this as mesh to, and I can see what we're having. Uh, when you're doing things like this, you want to check on your normals. So I'm going to do that using face orientation. Uh, things look okay, except the other side, the other half. Uh, looks like everything is flipped. And uh, the reason for that is I think every time you join geometry like this, using an extrude and, an, and then a, another object like this, you need to check on your normals. If I look at this, you can see this one is flipped because I think, let me see, let me see. Yeah, we need to make sure that uh, when we look at this, we don't see the red. So I'm going to use a flip flip mesh and flip the normals. I think it's for this and uh, now we are good there. If we look at everything here, uh, we have an issue here. I think because we have an extrude on this here, we are, because we are extruding in a negative direction here, uh, that's uh, making, that is flipping at the faces for uh, this extrusion. So let me do another flip faces and uh, we should be good like that. We still have control over uh, the height. I'm not sure if I, if I want to have a single value to control the height of both, but uh, I don't know, maybe in your version you can change that and make it so that uh, you have two values. Uh, yeah, so, in this setup, we are only able to uh, to add one cut, and uh, if we adjust the position of our curve, if we change, if we edit the curve, you can see we don't. Sometimes you you see that uh, the boolean is uh, the boolean object is not following uh, the curve object. So let's add multiple arches, and uh, we also want to have be able to add these arches around uh, the curve or following the curve. So let's grab everything until here. I think yeah. Join this F2, call this arch, color this as well, now that color. Let me turn off my orientation. Set shade smooth. Yeah, we want it to be flat. Okay, so this is what we have. And uh, instead of just having this arch uh, directly onto be the Boolean mesh, we're going to have it as an instance. So let's go to the original curve. Uh, this is here, we want to instance Okay, so we have this arch. So what I'm going to do is instance it onto this curve. So let's turn this into points, curve to points, using curve to points. Uh, about here, uh, we have our points, and then we need to instance 
on points and our instances are going to be uh, the arches like that uh, we need to align uh, their rotation to the curve so I'm going to do align unit vector so our rotation goes to rotation and then the normal goes to uh, the vector and uh, they should be rotated like that now if the rotation is a bit off uh, we can add another we can add a vector math here after this and just uh, add what I think 1.5 because these I think are in radians let me see what is 90 degrees to radians 90 is 1.57 yeah so 1.57 all right so you can see that we have proper orientation now and then uh, let me see if I try tangent I think tangent also does the same thing uh, as long as you get things to align correctly and uh, we can also bring in the original curve uh, let me just add a note there and uh, use a join geometry and join a geometry around there and uh, so I can see where on this okay so yeah you can see that uh, everything is set up there and uh, now we can use these as our booleans as our boolean mesh now we just have to preview this and there we go we have a bridge uh, like that uh, we do have a lot of arches so let's reduce that by reducing the count so you can see how you can easily adjust you know, make sure you're saving and uh, make sure you also save a backup copy as well so at this stage we are almost done the other thing is now to add these decorative uh, things like uh, these uh, bricks here and uh, these here and we should be done uh, another thing we could do is uh, let's see let's see let's come up to where is our yeah this arc here this is how it looks if we add a set position a set position and then add a float curve in case we need to adjust the profile uh, we need let me see what direction this is going in this is going from the uh, in the y direction so I need to first get the position position use a separate XYZ and uh, another combine combine XYZ uh, this is going to go into the position again I just connect all of these now if I place this into the Y uh, it's a bit clipping uh, because our curve goes above uh, the Z axis but I think if I reduce the radius yeah to something like that I sh should be fine I can make adjustments to how the curve looks and uh, it will reflect in the final bridge here uh, the shape should uh, reflect why is it not ah yeah, yeah. I need to connect this you can see ah, that's that's an interesting design so you can see we can uh, make all sorts of bridges uh, I'm going to keep this very simple let me remove these but uh, you can always come back to that if you want and uh, make adjustments to uh, unfortunately I don't think there is a way to expose this curve uh, in the parameters here it would be very very powerful if it was possible but uh, right now I don't think it is now let's add some decorative elements to the arc I like these bricks that go around the arc so for those since we already have uh, the arc oh yeah, is that after all the adjustments let me see make sure that uh, all these inputs yeah we, we, we can get an arc from this I need to remove all these edges I need to remove all these middle edges so I can grab an edge angle and uh, delete geometry I want to delete edges and I can connect this geometry uh, right now we're deleting everything but uh, if I add a signed selection you can see we get that and uh, if I use compare compare I can try and play around with this yeah so uh, I think I need less than so that I just get uh, the opposite 
of that and uh, we also need to remove uh, these bottom edges I want to delete this and uh, I can remove a these edges uh, as long as they are located below pivot point so I can use that to my advantage just grab the position and use a separate XY and just compare the Z position I compare the Z position with uh, zero so anything less than should be any edge that is less than located at less than zero should be removed and now we have our axe like that we can now convert them to curve mesh to curve and now we're good to go uh, so now we need to just instance some sort of brick we can create a cube a cube uh, I should be a bit elongated in one I think this is good enough I'm going to subdivide mesh I wish there was a, a bevel mesh and that would have been better but I'm going to use this and maybe subdivide mesh subdivision surface after this let's see let's see if I use edge neighbors edge angle and uh, use that as crease would that really help compare Ah, it wouldn't work because ah, this edge angle is before the subdivision so I would need a subdivide mesh before that subdivide mesh I think for this to work correctly Yeah, I think that's how we can get a more rounded brick. But of course, we don't need that many subdivisions for, for this. I just wanted to demonstrate how you could do that. Uh, we just keep it to level 2. Still a little bit says not necessary. Just wanted to show you how you could do that. Uh, okay, so we need to instead this onto this. So again, we can convert this to curve to points. Curve to points are like this. And uh, instance on points. On points. Like that. Uh, the curves are going to be our points. And uh, then this brick is going to be our instance. If we preview this, you can see what we have. Uh, it's now about... We just need to align everything. I'm just going to borrow this. And... Uh, tangent to vector and then rotation to that and then this uh, to that just need to get the right rotation here let's see ah, I think that's okay so I guess I need to come here and just adjust uh, the, uh, the width a bit like that can Join this back to the bridge using a join geometry. And actually this has to be uh, it's not it shouldn't be there, it should be let's see. Yeah, this is this the same? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we just need another. Okay, I need to frame this so that there is no confusion. So, control this. This is going to be. This is going to be a boolean. A boolean object instancer. Give it a nice color. Let's see, can I duplicate all of it? And uh, let me grab this, frame it. A nice color call this brick arch brick arch brick okay and uh, this is going to be arch brick instancer arch brick instancer and uh, so 
uh, we have the points from our curve uh, which I could uh, which is this here so if you look at this not much ah we need the uh, the arches are uh, this here as the instance yeah you can see they also follow the arc so if we look at this uh, we need first remove uh, this connection and just connect this and yes you can see how that looks uh, I think we need to push this a bit in so I'm going to come here and I uh, use a set position uh, should I put it here I think I need to come back to the curve object let me see so yeah to this and just scale it a bit in uh, so that we can so these bricks are pushed in as well so I'm going to have a set a transform a transform node just push my frame up here transform node and then scale this is it on the no no on the y axis yeah and that should push that there everything should still work just fine uh, if I come to the inputs I have here I need to name them properly so that I can easily find them so the height adjust the only issue is that uh, the points don't really adjust uh, the number of bricks don't adjust but everything else seems to work as expected now from that we, we can expose the number the count for the brick instances uh, I think that's uh, somewhere here uh, where we have uh, the curve to points yeah, so we can adjust the number of bricks here let's first add this barrier here this wall here okay to do that we need uh, this edge here and that edge and uh, for that we need to go back to the on uh, the arch but uh, this block so we have the block I can just grab a delete geometry and I can delete any points that are below uh, the problem is if I move this up it won't be below anymore but I don't expect anyone to move uh, this up and I can expect people to move this on the X direction uh, but uh, not up so yeah it should work using the position node position node and just removing uh, use the separate and just compare the vertices we want to, to delete so z compared to these points so these are our original points anything we want anything less than to be removed and again the issue i was having uh, can i select the points yeah 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 if you move this up uh this won't work but again like i said i don't expect anyone to be moving this up i can expect people to move this on the x and y axis uh, which won't cause any issues uh, if i go to wireframe yeah we need to remove these middle edges so that, so that we remain with the boundaries of this mesh so to do that we are going to use our edge neighbors our face neighbors face neighbors are uh, because this edge here only has one neighbor one face neighbor are uh, this face but these long vertices of the edges have this face and this face as a neighbor so we can just delete all these edges that have uh, a neighbor and a face count of of more than one so i can use a compare again we are looking at this uh, I need to delete at uh, this time we're deleting edges and uh, I want to compare the face count as long as it's greater than I think one I uh, should be good so if they are greater than one uh, it's supposed to be edge neighbors not face neighbors that's why it wasn't working so let me switch that to edge neighbors here and uh, it should get us the face count and uh, as long as that is greater than one we should be able to see 
I see. Yeah. Greater than two. Anything greater than two, we should remove. Uh, anything else? Uh, so let's see. Can we use uh, less than? Less than one. Yeah. So that gives us the border of our bridge. That and uh, we still have the the ability to adjust the height here or the width. Yeah, so this is what we have and uh, we want to remove this edge and this edge for this to work properly. I found the best way for this to work is to just get the uh, index of these points. So right now, let's see, let's look at, uh, let's get a delete here and just use, uh, just to demonstrate, uh, let's get an index uh, value and uh, use a compare node. If I connect this to that and then this to this, you can see uh, how these our work so we start from there go to there and then we can remove let's see I think this is the middle if I come to this uh, we have 48 vertices so uh, if we have 47 we can if we have anything greater than 48 47 uh, we are able to remove that so we can we can create a procedure where to get this value because right now we're just uh, eyeballing it uh, if we change anything about the mesh uh, this value will not work correctly so let's grab an attribute statistics attribute statistics and uh, we want uh, the index as our attribute uh, we want edges we want the edge count and uh, we can use that the maximum value there I think let's see max the maximum value was uh, four was 50 but I think if we have a value of 47 or 48 here, uh, we are able to remove the two verses. So we can do use this as the maximum value minus a value another value. So if I use a math node here, uh, math node, uh, if we subtract two, uh, then we get that, uh, which is great. All right, so we have our bridge profile. I'm going to call this bridge uh, bridge curve. I uh, need to make sure that uh, when I adjust uh, the resolution here, uh, these don't come back. We can use an extrude mesh, extrude these edges, and uh, let's preview just this uh, because I want to create this wall. And let first remove this offset and do a set position, a set position, and extrude this. Extrude uh, the wall like that, and I, I can join this back to the original geometry. Let us remove the wireframe. Join this back to the original geometry. I like that. You can see what we have. So I don't think it should be that that long and I can use another extrude node here. Uh, this time we're extruding faces, not individual faces. So I can push these out a bit. I like that. Uh, I need to join this back so that uh, it's filled correctly. Remove this. So you see how our bridge starts to look uh, we still have uh, this original arc I can use that for other things I can uh, since we have uh, this curve here I can use and uh, turn it to a curve object mesh to curve mesh to curve and then curve to points to points can add as many points as we want and uh, we can instance on points like that now what we're going to instance our our bridge our bricks uh which should be yeah this arc brick let me expand this for a bit grab this and connect that ours our instance uh, it's this here is that's our brick so i'm going to grab that and now that should be yeah our brick then we just need to align uh, these. So let me grab and align down a bit and just reduce the count. 
just like that. A bridge. I think the brick is a nice detail. Okay, so in the original one, uh, we had a few other things. We yeah, we had these chains and uh, these poles here. We can add those as well. Let's add the poles. The poles are easy. Uh, it's the best. They can also be used. We can use this instancer, the arc instancer, or the boolean instancer. Yeah, the boolean instancer. So I'm going to just. I think it's Control D. Yeah, you can duplicate this with all the connections which is great so I can look at this and uh, that's that but uh, uh, these are our points we can control the number of points uh, now we just want to change the instances and I think I can use the brick uh, the brick object we had which is this as our instance so this here as our instance I'm just going to add a transform node transform node uh, to rotate it or oh, let me remove uh, this let me see if I yeah, need 1.57 and I can scale this on the Z axis uh, on the Z axis like that push it up again like that so this is where we are we have our poles there I can't see them now they are in here, our, our middle points. Uh, I think I could use uh, a different curve. I can use the curve we are using for, uh, oh, so this bridge curve as our points. So bridge curve as our points instead of instead of the original point. We had so if I come here, uh, nothing is going to show because uh, we need to convert this into an arc. We need to convert this into a curve. So mesh to curve. Now that should correct uh, that error. Okay. Now if we look at the final thing, we have those. I like that. Perfecto. Then uh, we can still use the bridge curve, uh, this here, to create the chain, uh, the, final, the final chain. And uh, let me preview that. Uh, so this is what we have. Uh, we can, uh, this is the original thing. Uh, we can have this connected here. Uh, here, so that we can see that the curves that we're trying to add the chain onto. Uh, I need a set position so that I can move them above everything else. Uh, set position. Push these above uh, like that. And uh, I can add another set position. And just duplicate this. Just remove this but this time I want to add some lag here some sagging into the curve and uh, what I'm going to do for this I can change check the let me see can I check the pro proximity of these points on the curve are to these here so I can use a proximity let me first get because it's going to be very hard I don't know if it's going to be very hard to see but uh, let's see let's see let's see if I use a proximity node, proximity, okay, now you can see that uh, at every pole we have a dark point, uh, so that means that uh, at the distance there, uh, that means that uh, there is a point there, so the distance is near zero or zero. So, and you can even verify this by, I think, increasing the uh, points there, but uh, let's not do that. Uh, so, yeah, we can. I uh, want to because we want to make the lines sag a bit so we're going to grab this line a uh, line here get this position uh, we can use a combine connect that to the offset because we want to change the offset of this and just push this in uh, you can see what we are getting there it looks a bit jagged I uh, like that but uh, uh, that's okay what we need 
yeah what we need then is more our resolution of this uh, we're actually getting uh, something completely we don't have enough resolution to see the results clearly so I'm going to come back here uh, here is our original curve uh, I don't know if it's still a curve yeah it's, it's a mesh so we need to use a subdivide mesh so we have more points now you can see what is going on here so essentially what we're doing here is grabbing using the distance of uh, the different points we have so we have a point here we have a point here and we have a point here and uh, let me see let me just verify that for you guys so these are our curve points and you can see yeah exactly where we have them so we're just getting the distance from each point uh, to uh, the distance to our pole and uh, since our pole locations are at the points there so we have a zero distance and a zero here so it increases here and we're using that to influence the position of each vertex in our curve hence getting that uh, that like that but uh, I want to this to flip uh, so that is more of uh, an inverted V uh, so to do that I think let's try using a, a float curve yeah I think if we flip this around oh we need to preview uh, this yeah you see when we flip this we get exactly what we want so we get that flipped around actually we haven't really flipped it around so let me see can I do this yeah uh, this gives us uh, that and now what we can do is use a math node here and just use a smooth minimum or is it a smooth maximum smooth maximum uh, to make thing to make uh, the wires more curved uh, like that if we wanted to do uh, a chain all we need to do is first convert this into a curve object so let me do that uh, mesh to curve mesh to curve like so and uh, we need a curve to instance uh, the chain link uh, to instance on that and uh, that for that we're going to use uh, let me see a circle a curve circle which is going to look uh, it's going to be an actual curve but uh, the resolution we can use four like that and uh, I want this to be rotated so I'll use a transform and uh, rotate this 45 uh, degrees on this Z and we can scale this on the okay, I think uh, because we rotated this uh, we, we, we would need another transform node and just scale this on the X uh, there is an affiliate option here that we can use to kind of run off those a bit uh, run off the corners a bit have to mesh and give this a uh, profile we can just use a circle reduce the radius and the resolution down we have that okay this is going to be our our link uh, this is we have a curve here already uh, we can convert this to points curve to points and then instance on points and so we can connect this uh, directly like that uh, we need to align everything I can rotation and then use the tangent and then connect this to the rotation scale them we need more points so and see what we have we have that but we need to rotate each every other link 90 degrees so for that we're going to add a rotate rotate instance i uh, rotate this by i think y axis 90 degrees but uh, we want to just uh, rotate only the odd numbers or even numbers so to get that we can just use the index connect that as the selection but we want only the odd numbers so we can use a math node and change uh, math node I uh, divide this use the modulus of this and change this to two and that gives us uh, that and I think uh, that's good so let's expose some parameters I know that uh, this is uh, the width so yeah now we can jump into the materials which I think should be quite easy just use a set material on everything and uh, yeah we are good to go 
Yeah, I think I'll do a proper EV uh, tutorial because I don't want to make this very long. But uh, you can see how I UV unwrap this. I'll be leaving a link in the description uh, for the geometry to set up that I did to UV unwrap this. I think that's it for today. You can set up the materials for yourself or you can just download the project files uh, in the description if you want to see how I set them up. And they're not really that hard, but uh, if you're not familiar with how to set up materials, it could be a bit difficult. So just go into the links in the description and download the project file uh, to examine it for yourself. And uh, yeah, if you want to support the channel, you can become a Patreon, get the project files or become a YouTube member. That is also an option now. Uh, so you can uh, get the pretty files and my other add-ons that I've been creating. 